Blessed be. I'm Amethyst Moonflower here live in my sanctuary. Uh, I don't know who's going to be here. I'll give it maybe a couple minutes before I get started on the subject. I just wanted to come in and say hi, Mary Meet. Um, yeah, so today we're doing a live witchcraft and wine. And uh, the wine I'm drinking is a cheap wine. This is it right here. It's a yellow tail sangria. Mm. A red wine infused with fruit flavors. Um, sweet and citrusy, bursting with mandarin and orange flavors with a hint of red fruits. Inspired by the traditional drink of Spain, yellow tail sangria combines a splash of fruit flavors with red wine for an authentic and refreshing experience served chilled or over ice. Which is what I'm doing right here. I poured it over some ice in my jar. And I'll tell you what, it tastes just like a sangria. I love it. It's so summery, which is perfect for right now. So, um, if anybody pops up while I'm having this discussion, you can feel free to, you know, conversate or ask any questions, you know. Um, leave your opinion or thoughts on the matter. But, yes, today we're talking about spiritual burnout or uh, burnout in general because uh, this kind of stems from multiple topics but also leads into multiple topics. So it kind of, you know, there's, there's multiple facets, there's multiple degrees of things that come from different things and and I'm going to try and kind of cover as in a way that you know I'm, I'm I'm not going to say I'm like I'm I'm not a therapist I'm not a doctor or anything like that so you know if you know mental health um subjects you know if you if you feel like you need help from a professional um I'm not here to stop you by all means get whatever help that you need you know i'm just here to open up the conversation and i know this conversation has kind of been covered before by other creators and stuff like that and so you know but i'm just here to put my thoughts and my experiences in on the subject because it's been really really kind of in my life a lot especially in the last year or so i have been experiencing the burnout in a really really hard way and um so i kind of feel like it's really relevant at least for in my life and in my practice and um i kind of want to there's a weird glare i'm trying i don't know how to get there but i guess there we go sorry about that there's this weird glare I, and I'm sorry about my lighting. I don't have the best lighting. Uh, my sanctuary is in my basement and I don't have any natural lighting. And so it's lit as much as I could possibly light it without making weird glares on the screen. So I apologize for not having the best lighting. Um, and as you can see, my background is all set up looking lovely. Uh, my main... Um, seasonal altars all set up for summer we're definitely going into summer here we got a couple more weeks until the summer solstice i'm super excited about it and but yeah burnout i guess a way to start on the subject is realizing that burnout is not exactly something that is easy to recover from it and it's kind of hard to explain to someone who may not have really experienced it before, especially, you know, because sometimes people are like, oh, I'm burnt out. And they're just, you know, you know, you could be wiped out from the day and be burnt out from the day or from the week. And, you know, sometimes burnout just lasts for a short period of time. But sometimes burnout can go a lot deeper than just a month or a week it, sometimes it can be an entire year which you know <laughs> it may not be your 
it, it can carry out in, in ways that we don't really expect it to. And it can kind of feel different for everybody. But for me, you know, when I burnt out, I didn't just burn out spiritually. I burnt out in a, every facet of my life. Like I was just completely fried. And I kept trying to regroup and be like, no, it's not happening. But it, burnout is kind of almost like the best way I can describe it is quicksand. It, it feels like quicksand. It feels like the harder you, you try, the more you struggle to get out, the harder and faster you sink. And the easiest, the best way to get out of quicksand instead of struggling like this is to actually kind of like lay flat and to kind of crawl out until you can get a solid foundation. You know, you're not going to get out by doing all this. You're going to slowly work your way out. You kind of have to flatten yourself out to, to create more coverage so that you can slowly work your way out. And that's how it feels when you're recovering from, from burnout is that you almost literally have to completely flatten yourself out and slowly work your way out so that you don't struggle so hard trying to recover from it. And, and, and it's a lot in the mindset is, is that, you know, when, when you're completely fried in, in, in a burnout state, um, it, you, it's like, you know, you, well, at least you got this perception. You have all these different things that you, you want to accomplish or you have to accomplish, you know, um, and, but your body and your mind just physically cannot anymore. Like, it's just like, and then you become frozen or at least in my experience, it's almost like you become more frozen and more stuck in this like overwhelming feeling of you know failure or you know well you feel like a failure because now you're frozen and now you're stuck and it's like the more you freeze and the longer you stay in this frozen the more stuff piles up because now you're avoiding everything and and so it's like First, it starts off in one area of your life, and, and then it may bleed over into other areas of your life. And the next thing you know, everything feels like it's falling down around you. But then the more it falls down around you, the more frozen you become. And and, and it's a fear. And it's this, um, like, I understand that now, as I've... Uh, um, sort of worked my way through these things, you know, um, is I've come to understand that a lot of it is the fear surrounding the idea of perfectionism. And the um, maybe sometimes it even comes from, you know, uh, what do they call it? imposter syndrome imposter syndrome is kind of a, a its own subject. But it can be you know, hand in hand with the, with burnout. And when I first, like, if we was going to look at it in a spiritual concept or in a witchy concept, in the idea that, you know, when you first come into things, everything's all exciting and everything's all fresh and new and you want to do all the things and you want to learn all the things and practice all the things and, um, like, you know, it's because it's new and it's exciting and there's so much to it. And um, so you dive in. And in the beginning, maybe the first few years, it's fine. You know, you're absorbing everything. You're, you know, you're, you, you're just learning all the things. You're writing in your book of shadows. You're performing all the circles and everything just seems so grand and magical. And then say after you've been doing it for a few years and you know, and then you might come to a point where you're like, wow, what's next? What's next in my practice? And then you kind of come to a lull point, 
you know, and then you finally realize what the next level is. And so you start doing more. And then, you know, eventually one day it just becomes to a point where it kind of loses its luster and its shine. Um, not everything is new forever, you know. It's like the newness wore away and now, now it's just like a natural part of your life and it's like any other part of your life you know when you have so much stuff going on and then eventually the mundane life takes over and it all becomes so much that you just you come to a screeching halt and at least in my experience my life came to a screeching halt because it was just overwhelming I was carrying so much responsibility, so many different projects, so many different to-do lists, and um, so many, you know, dreams and aspirations and things that I wanted to achieve, and then eventually my brain just zapped, nope, can't process any more information, can't check off any more to-do lists, can't do anything, and... If you've experienced that, you know, I feel for you. And if you're in that moment where it's like, it doesn't matter how many self-help books you read or self-help, you know, magical um, podcasts you listen to or how many times you try to accomplish things, it just isn't it anymore. And the only way to really recover is to allow yourself the space to rest and that can be very hard to rest when you've built up so many so much responsibility and so many aspirations and so many to do's that um that rest seems like I ain't got time for this you know or maybe you go like Oh, I did rest. I spent the weekend doing nothing, but you start Monday over and it still just isn't it. And then you end up spending the whole week going, man, I didn't get nothing done this week. Or I didn't get, n the whole month went by, I didn't get nothing done this month. All I did was survive. I didn't thrive, I just survived. Um, and, and you feel like a failure. You feel like you're letting everybody down around you. And you feel like you're letting yourself down. You feel like, you know, like you can't do anything. And then that imposter syndrome feeling creeps in. Because now you feel like an imposter. You feel like a fake because you're not doing all the things. And so that must mean... I don't know why I still have my sunglasses on. So that must mean that you're that you're a fake because you're you're not doing all the things. But sometimes you just can't do all the things. And then you have the world around you, the external world and all the chaos. Every five minutes it's a new tragic story in the news. <clears throat> and if you're a healer uh, or an uh, empath, there's somebody who cares so deeply and wants to heal and wants to help and wants to use the magic and and to to help all these people and then the world around you is just pure chaos and it's very draining it's very draining to try and be there for everybody around you and your in your inner circle but then also try and feeling like you're trying to be there for everybody in the world trying to accomplish so many goals trying to you know, do all the things and do all the circles and do all the, you know, and, and then eventually it just, you have to stop. You have to stop. You have to chill out. And that's what I had to learn how to do. I had to learn to chill out. I had to learn how to relax. And that can be hard to do to learn how to relax. Um, because in order for your brain to start getting back into that processing mode, it has to kind of reboot itself. And rebooting is boring. And rebooting, it takes a long time sometimes. Sometimes it feels like, you know, I ain't got time for this. You know, I ain't got time for this. 
At least that's how it feels to me, you know. But when I finally do just relax, take a moment, clear the mind, and give myself space, give myself permission, and let go of the guilt and the shame and the imposter syndrome and the fear and just allow myself to be in myself. Because... You know, when you're in the purest form of burnout, sometimes it gets so bad that you almost feel numb to everything. Like you almost just don't even have any more room left to feel any of things. And so you really have to give yourself space in order to recharge, in order to reboot. And um, it, if you're a witch or a Wiccan or a spiritual practitioner in any type of way that relates to what I'm from the perspective that I'm coming from here. It, um, or even it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But the point is, is that in order to heal from burnout is really being honest with yourself and really lower removing the expectations of what you think everybody else around you has of you because the thing is is that i've come to realize is that a lot of the expectations that i had was put on to me by me i was the one that put all the responsibility on myself i was the one that made all the to-do lists i was the one that created the idea that I had to do all the things. Nobody else did, it was me. And so I have to look at myself in the mirror and be honest with me and be like, look, if you can't do all the things, it's okay. Or at least if you do have a lot of goals, like I, I do have a lot of goals. I have a lot of things that I wanna accomplish in my life. And then there's this always ever impending sense of doom that if I don't get to everything that I'm a failure. And it's like, no. But if you do have a lot of goals like I do, I found that it's better to just, you know, focus on only one or two things at a time. And I know a lot of people say that, but it's harder to put things into practice than it is to say it. Like me sitting here talking about it is easy, but doing it is hard. Action is always going to be the hardest step out of anything. You know, we can write out a ritual and put it in our brick of shadows and it can look beautiful, you know, and stunning and the words can be perfect, you know, but then actually doing it, you know, is always going to be a lot harder and there's always going to be practice. You're always going to make mistakes. So you're going to have to redo the same thing over and over and over again until it creates a muscle memory, you know, and that, that, transfers into every area of your life no matter what it is not even just magical stuff but even just mundane stuff if you have a goal or you have stuff that you want to achieve you can't achieve anything by trying to achieve it all at once otherwise you're going to just scatter yourself too far spread yourself too thin and you're not going to be able to accomplish anything because now you're just surrounded by a bunch of unfinished projects and no energy to complete anything. And so to me, the best thing to do is to just focus on one thing, maybe two at a time. Um, maybe set yourself a timer, which I've been working with a timer myself because it does kind of, you know, keep me a little bit more on track. Because like if I go to work, a normal job, you know, when you're at work, you know, you know what your job is, you know that you're going to be there for eight hours, you got so much, but you got breaks in between. And, you know, most people don't need someone breathing down their neck every five seconds in order to accomplish whatever their work is when they're at their job. But when they're at home, and they're responsible for themselves, and they have goals and or things that they have to achieve, you know, they're, they're all of a sudden they're like, oh, I can't focus. I can't, I can't stay focused. Set yourself a timer, you know, and be like for a half an hour, I'm only going to focus on 
this one thing and when the timer goes off i'm going to give myself a break and there's a word for there's a type of um um uh what do they call it like there's a word for it there's a it's it's a type of system that's already been labeled but i cannot even remember the name of it off the top of my head and i didn't make any notes i kind of just went into this um you know free form today to talk about this subject because i feel like we're all facing it we're all kind of in one way or another in different spectrums of the reality dealing with some type of burnout in our lives because we want to be perfect and we want to achieve all the things but how can we achieve anything if we're trying to do too much at once you know and when it comes to our spiritual practice you know we talk about daily rituals or you know all types of things and you know there's a lot of really great advice out there that really talks about you know making small everyday things magical which is true and i do that all the time but when it comes to like bigger things you know it can take a lot more work to muster up that stuff but what it's important to remember is that once you claim that you know i'm a witch everything you do is magical everywhere you go you're a witch it doesn't matter of whether or not you're doing witchy things right now or not doing witchy things right now you're still a witch you know it's you it's part of um a facet of who you are as a person it's part of your reality and so if you wanted to look at it, everything you do is magical because everywhere you go, everything you do is magical, whether it's big or it's small. Um, and to not put so much pressure on yourself, realizing that the pressure that we put on ourselves is 99% of the time us doing it to us. And so let's all collectively just agree to stop doing it. That to agree that we're not perfect beings and that we're never going to accomplish every little thing in our life. And if we don't, how important is it that we do? You know, if we forget to put out a bowl to collect storm water during a storm, does that make us a bad witch? No. If we try to plant seeds in our garden and, you know, most of them didn't make it, does that make us a bad witch? No. You know, a lot of the stuff that we do you know, it seems important, but it's not. It's only important if we make it important. What is important is that we take care of ourselves. What is important is that we do the inner work and the inner understanding so that we can grow and slowly recover so that we can reemerge with a new understanding and a new perspective and try to be better next time. That's all we can do, right? Is to just try and be better next time. Not perfect, but just a little bit better. And that's what I've come to realize for myself. You know, I have a lot of things that I want to do, but I don't always have time for it. And I don't always have, you know, the means or the energy and to not be mad at myself for it when I can't do it. Um, I see there are a few people here. If anybody has any questions or comments, you can uh, leave them and I'll try and answer them. But yeah, um, the sangria is great, by the way. <laughs> I know for myself, like with the planner, with making the planners and stuff like that, it does help. But I really had to get away from this whole... Um, the bullet journaling thing because even though I like the idea of the flexibility of everything it was just too much work for me to keep up with you know because I'm an artist and I want to make things pretty naturally that's like my urge I'm like oh well I can't just stand a plane but then it's not just even plain it just takes too much time out of my day or my month for me to keep making the same outlines and the same grids over and over and over again when there's so many great pre-made options out there that there's why don't I just use what's already made and already formulated and just enjoy 
other people's product instead of constantly trying to do it myself. Um, that's why I went back to disc planners because it does allow the flexibility that I need by being able to move the pages around. But it's also, sorry, my daughter's upstairs talking to the cat. <laughs> Elaine! What? I'm on the, I'm on the camera. Oh, no, what? <laughs> what? Why are you screaming? <laughs> I don't know, I'm on a phone call with Kimberly, you know how we are. Okay. Chaos. Well, I'm live. Oh, I'm sorry. Um. Teenagers, right? <laughs> Teenagers. Yes, so now I gotta try and remember where I was going with that. But anyways, yeah, Can you just can release here in a little bit. Okay. Uh appreciating what's already available to you and using what's already available to you to remove the pressure. Because just because everybody else is doing something doesn't mean you have to do it too. You know, if you want to try it, give yourself space to try it. Give your, Don't, you know, judge something without trying it, which is what I was doing with the uh, uh, bullet journal planning type schedule or thing was because I was giving myself space to try it because I was like, oh, this looks really cool. It seems really interesting. I, I got different spreads in my mind that I think would be cool. And being that I'm an artist, you know, and maybe it'll give me some freedom. But what it really did was it just put too much pressure on me to make these things all the time. Um, especially when it's like I'm the only one that's really benefiting from it. And I mean, if you love doing stuff like that, it's great. But I went back to the disc bound system of planner because I needed something that was already structured out for me so I could just fill in the blanks. That's what I need. I need to just be able to fill in the blanks. Um, or in here, like down here, I have different altars. These are, they can sometimes be a lot of work to keep up with these things, you know, like keeping up with my seasonal altar. But that's why I've been trying to not do it for like every, every single Sabbath but maybe just like the four quarters or whenever I feel like it, whenever I feel like it needs to be changed. Because sometimes in order to, this goes into another point that I was trying to make is that, you know, when you're burnt out, you're, you kind of have a stuck energy. And when energy gets stuck, energy doesn't move, energy doesn't flow. And we kind of, maybe when you're burnt out, physically you're stuck in a sense is like, you're stuck on the couch. You don't have energy or you're stuck in bed. You don't have energy to get anything done except for like the most pressing things. Like you're starving. So you find a way to eat. You might make dinner, you know, but, or you might just go buy fast food. But when you're in that stuck energy and energy doesn't move, the longer you're in it, the more stuck you become and the harder it is to break free. So I try to when I really feel stuck to move energy and mm -hmm. my sacred space reminds me when it's time to move energy. Another great thing to do is that, you know, sometimes when you're burnt out, you kind of don't even feel attached to your body or you kind of feel like you're outside of your body, like a almost dissociative type of feeling. Um, like I said, I'm not a doctor. If you suffer from certain symptoms, don't come at me. You know, I'm just speaking from a personal experience. But like there were moments when I kind of just felt really detached and unconnected to the world around me and to myself. And one of the things that helped me come back to my body and come back to present moment was going outside like it is grounding and centering is a, like one of the most basic things, but it really does make a difference. And really just rem taking off your shoes or and, and putting your feet right on the ground or just sitting on the ground, sitting under a tree. Or if you have a garden, weeding your garden, refreshing things, getting your hands in the dirt or you know, doing an activity outside that you would normally do inside, like maybe 
if it's nice outside, grilling on the grilling your meal and then eating it outside, it just puts you out of the house. Like sometimes those four walls become a, a box that separates you and disconnects you from the rest of the world. And taking time to be outside of that box and in the world and getting fresh air and getting fresh sunshine and getting your hands and your feet in the earth and, you know, going swimming and, you know, all these different things that we know how to interact with nature, like going for walks and stuff. Like it really does help bring you back to your body and bringing you back into yourself and reconnecting you know, you might not get a complete epiphany, but at least it's building that connection back up. You're opening yourself up. You're opening yourself up to the healing process. Taking care of yourself as a physical human being and then remembering to brush your teeth and wash your face. You know, like I was trying to say at the beginning of the video is that as a witch, a lot of the stuff that we do every day can be magical if we just put that certain intention to remind us who we are and what we can do to change it. But also don't, taking the pressure off at the same time to accomplish everything. Um, and it's a lot out here in the world. We go, We all go through so much. And if there's more on this subject that you guys feel like I didn't cover that could be said, you know, the uh, comment section is open space for this type of discussion. If you need support, I'm always here. We can, if you just need someone to talk to or need some advice, you know, from somebody who's been there and is still actively recovering from these type of things, because, you know, I'm a certified spiritual life coach. I'm and I'm a certified Reiki healer. I'm a certified crystal healer, um, aromatherapist. So like I, I'm somebody who some people would think, oh, she doesn't have to worry about all that stuff. Um, yeah, I, I still suffer from these things, but it's my experience that I've gone through and things that I've learned that sort of helps me help others and I'm not saying I have all the answers because I don't you know and like I said I'm not a medical doctor so if there's more going on than what meets the eye or things that need to be dealt with go get professional help but as a spiritual healer sometimes you have to go well not sometimes but part of the process of being a healer for others and for the world is life is not just a circle. It's not a life is not a 2D circle where you're just going around like this. It's actually more of a spiral. Every time you come back to the same point, you actually go right above it. Like it's it's a constant it's more of a spiral where you're going overlapping where it's like you're in the same point, but you're actually not in the same point. Now you've ascended past that point or sometimes below, depending on the type of lesson that you're learning and where you're at in life and where you're at in your journey. But it's you're never going to hit that same point in the same spot every single time. You're actually going above it or below it, however the energy is flowing. And so it's like I learn... And then I teach and then I learn and then I teach or I learn and I help others with their spot. And, and that's where we're at as a healing type of modality. And there's so much to do in this world. And burnout is really hard to get through because it is a personal healing process. Like I can sit here and talk about it all day. But if you're going through it, you could be like, yeah, you got it, but it's not. Because you have to deal with your own healing. You have to deal with your own shadow work. And you have to come to your own conclusions in order to crawl out of that quicksand of burnout. Um, but to also realize you're not alone in this. That you do have uh, support systems out here that are 
ready to help you figure out how to get out of it. Maybe there's a way that someone else figured out how to get, deal with it that you haven't thought of before. And I'm just so ready to be like, I'm done with this whole burnout thing. Because I, I've been in a stuck spot myself for so many months that it's like every time I think that I'm ready to start the engine back up again, the universe comes and reminds me I'm not ready yet. And, but I feel like I'm ready, you know, I just got to remind myself of the tools so that I can move past it because it has been gone on long enough, at least in my mind. Like I keep telling myself it's been long enough, but then the universe is like, no, you still haven't learned your lesson yet. And so I keep getting smacked with it over and over and over again. I keep getting knocked back down because they keep saying you still haven't learned that lesson yet. And, but I'm also really become more aware of the idea of toxic positivity too. That, you know, not everything is happy hunky dory. And if you live in the real world, you know that it's true. That we're, it, life is not all happy hunky dory and the healing process is not happy hunky dory. And I can't stand people that are just stuck in that toxic positivity way. You know, I mean, it burnout is a very not positive place to be. I mean... Yeah, there are positive things that can come out of it, but you don't want that, oh, just think positive and everything's going to go away. No, that you're not going to heal anything. You're not going to learn the lessons if you're constantly telling yourself to just think good thoughts and think positive affirmations and then all of your problems are going to go away. That's, that's not how any of this works. You got to deal with the shit in order to move past it. In order to really heal, you got to deal with the shit. You got to look at yourself in the mirror. And one of the things that kind of, you know, I did have to do, though, is that I worked a, quite a bit of spell work around my burnout and around my shadow aspects, my shadow, my fears, my toxic traits. You know, I was doing spell work What was like, a banishing and a cleansing and constantly bringing this shit up and being like, yes, you do procrastinate. Yes, you do self-sabotage. Yes, you do, you know, um, you, you, I got, I got a lot of stuff and I had to keep laying it out. But what I would do is I'd write down all my negative stuff and I would reflect on it and I would feel the feelings and be honest with myself journal if I had to but then I would write you know like a banishing scribe or um not scribe um banishing sigil over it and then like burn it and release it because I had to do the spell work because I'm like you know banish the bullshit um get it out of my life you know it but I also had to make like action steps on like well it's not it's more than just burning a piece of paper I had to make action steps where it's like each step is one little step to dig me out of the hole and and to be like today all I'm asking myself to do today is to you know um meditate for 10 minutes if I do that I accomplished what I wanted to do or today, I want to write, but, you know, maybe just write one page. Or just read one chapter or something. Like, just do something. Don't do nothing. Um, even if all you do is go and sit outside and let the sunshine shine on your face for, for a few minutes. To just give yourself, whatever that goal is, set a, something, one small thing to accomplish. And when you have days that are good and you can accomplish more, that's great. But on days when you really feel stuck, you know, try to find ways where it's like, even if I just do this one thing, I, I accomplished something today. I didn't just allow myself to lay there and 
pity myself because I'm a failure and allow those negative thoughts to permeate. You know, the anxiety and the depression are real things. But that, you know, if you have to get help, go get help. You know, if you have to take medicine, take medicine. I mean, I'm not going to tell anybody not to do those things because I'm not a doctor. And I'm not going to pretend like I have all the answers. I don't. I'm just, you know, I know what it feels like to be in those dark places. And, but... Sometimes you have to go into those dark places. That's where we do our most work is in those dark places. But you can't live in them. You just have to, you know, you got to visit them, you know. So, like I said, if there's anything that anybody wants, like a question or wants to open up the conversation somewhere else, leave them in the comments down below. And I will be... Getting out of here for today. I feel like I've been here long enough and I've rambled on and on and on. And since it's such a beautiful day, I'm going to take my daughter on a walk. We're going to go into the woods. Well, we're going to go walk down a, a path that's through the woods. We'll probably end up going off the trail because we always do. But I just don't want to spend my whole day cooped up inside the house. Um, I got plenty of time for that later on this evening. I want to go enjoy the sunshine with my family. And so I'll be seeing you guys all next time. I will be trying to appear a little bit more regularly. I know everybody's been commenting on some of my videos that I've made in the past about, you know, my Book of Shadows. When am I going to update the Book of Shadows video? I know I keep saying it's coming. But... You know, I didn't work on my Book of Shadows for almost like three or four months, you guys. I'm like literally being honest right now. Like, the burnout was so bad, I didn't even write in my Book of Shadows. Because I didn't even know where I was going with it. And I was in a in a space in my spirituality where it was like, there was so much more that I wanted to learn, but I didn't know what I was looking for. And I just felt like I was in a dead-end spot in my spirituality and I felt very uninspired to write and so I didn't accomplish a whole lot for a while but now I've gained some clarity now I know where I'm going and what I'm doing and I do plan on sharing my book of shadows with you I just you know I know that it's something that's n probably never going to be finished but at the same time I wish there was more to share because you know, I I wouldn't want to walk you through my book of shadows if there wasn't a whole lot of progress. Because then it would be like watching the same video again and again and again. But, you know, since you guys are really, really keen on it, hopefully here soon I will be doing another book of shadows flip through. And then we can move on to other topics and things like that. And let's see where the future goes. I'm not leaving YouTube. I don't have any plans to disappear for long periods of time anymore. But then at the same time, I want to ease my way into things instead of, you know, like what I was saying, trying to do too much at once. So I'm doing what I'm doing and you guys can enjoy it when I make it. And I hope, well, at least I hope that you enjoy it when I make it. And I'll be seeing you guys all in the next video. Like, subscribe. Love you. Bye.